move on to the next question. So this is question number three. Oh, question number three. Okay. So here in this question, we're asked, how do you find the discriminant and how many solutions does it have? Just give me a second. Okay, so we need to kind of define what the discriminant is to kind of uh, answer the how many solutions questions here. So here the junior tutor describes the discriminant as follows, and this is from the quadratic equation. So I'll write out the quadratic equation. It is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So this is an important formula to memorize. It's just the quadratic formula. Uh, and it's used to find the solutions of an, ex an equation in the following format. So if you had an equation with this format, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, essentially you would have to plug in the constants in front of these variables, x squared and x and uh, the last constant, into this equation to find the solutions. And the scenarios that pop up where you have real solutions or one real solution or no real solutions is described here below with the junior tutor. So they're saying the discriminant in this scenario is, is this right here. So this right here is the discriminant. And they represent it as capital D is equal to B squared minus 4AC. So we just got this from above. So this is just the definition of what the discriminant is. And essentially, you have three scenarios as outlined by the junior tutor. You have when D equals 0, when D is greater than 0, and then when D is less than 0. So when D is equal to 0, so when this is equal to zero, we can see that this term over here would equal to zero, and we end up with just negative b over 2a. So if we were to plug in these values in this equation, we'd only really have one real root. So this is correct over here. So when, d is equal, when the discriminant is equal to zero, we'd have one real root, and it would be this value. So, and then when d is greater than zero, so when this is positive, we can see that we have two real roots. And essentially, it's saying the, the real um, um, term right here, essentially saying there's no negative underneath the square root. Therefore, the results of this formula will give us a real root. So if this was like anything greater than 0, so it could be 5, 10, anything, we could find a value over here that's real. And then we still have this plus and minus over here. So if we did the calculation for the first scenario where it's negative b plus whatever this value is, divided by 2a, we get one root. So we'd have, I'll call it just the first root. And then we have the second root is when you use the negative sign. So uh, the, the, uh, the first root here, I'll write it out so it's more clear. So, let me just draw an arrow. So if we draw the arrow over here, so the first root is negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2. And then the next one is b, 2a, sorry, negative b minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is the first one. This is the second one. That's why we have two real roots when it's a positive value. And then finally, no real roots and the parabola does not pass through the x-axis. So what this is saying is um, in this scenario over here, when this value is negative, we'll have square root of a negative number. And we can't do the square root of a negative number. So since we can't solve this, we'd say there's no real roots. The roots are essentially uh, imaginary. 
um, uh, but that's for a different topic. Um, but essentially, all you really need to know is when the discriminant is below zero, we know that there's no real roots and the parabola does not pass through the x-axis. So let's um, kind of outline what that means when we say the parabola doesn't pass through the x-axis. So, uh, give me a second, let me clear some space. So, so if we had the first scenario, we'll say d equal to zero, so discriminant equal to zero, this would give us one real root. And then this situation essentially would be plotted as such. So it would, we'd have an x, y, x, y, and then yeah, let's use a different color over here. It would be something like this. And then the, the, the parabola would just be touching. So here, the solutions or the roots are what, wherever the function crosses the x-axis. So here it's only in one area. So that's why you have one real root. In this second situation, let's do this in green. So when d is greater than zero, we would have something like this. So it could be anywhere as long as it passes through the x-axis twice. We would have two real roots and we know that the discriminant is greater than zero. And then finally in the last situation, I'll do this one in red. We'd have something like this. I'm going to draw over everything. So we'd have something like that. So we can see right here, it doesn't pass through the x-axis at, at all. It's above it. It could also be below it, uh, but like inverse. So it could be like this on the bottom. So this is when the discriminant is less than zero. So those are the three situations where you have um, a one real root, two real roots, or no real roots. So we'll mark this question as correct. Correct answer. Great job. And move on to question number four.